Hello and welcome to Drunken Book Club, an official, unofficial Goosebumps podcast. I'm your re capping host, Christopher the Rupal, joined with... Sam. You don't got any fun recap name? I don't, I can't think of anything right Come now. Come on, recapture your soul. I'm your... Okay, you're good. I uh, can't remember shit, <laughs> Sam. <laughs> and hey, so before we trek on to our journey of revisiting Goosebumps, well, for me revisiting, everyone else pretty much being introduced to these Goosebumps books, I kind of want to do a quick recap of the eight books we have already read uh, for the podcast. Also, you could just, you know, preemptively just re-listen to every single one. They're well worth your time. Uh, just a quick list off of all the ones we read. Welcome to Dead House. Stay out of the basement. Monster Blood. Monster Blood 2. Monster Blood 3. Monster Blood 4. Vampire Breath. And The Haunted Mask. Sam, which of these would you say was your favorite? I would probably say Haunted Mask. Yeah, that's... that's... I feel like it's just the best one of the group. Like, <laughs> it's no, definitely the best one. No contest. So let's start with The Haunted Mask then. The, probably the most memorable of all the books... I personally remember giving this one a 5 out of 5 when we... I, I, actually, I don't remember what I gave all these books. So I'm kind of I'm gonna kind of go with my gut feeling. Because I am a little tipsy, so I'm going to go with my drunken feelings on these books. I'm pretty positive I gave this one a 5 out of 5. It's honestly the quintessential Goosebumps book, in my opinion. It is the best one out of all the, for the whole series. No, I agree. It's definitely like the strong... Well, I can't speak for the whole series. Honestly, of... Of what I have read, at least, yeah. it is the strongest book. Like, right. on its own, like, regardless of if you've seen anything, read anything else. Yeah, I was about to say, it's a fantastic, it's a very well-written book. The characters are very, uh, I mean, Car- Carly Beth is one of the most sympathetic characters in Goosebumps, and it's just such a great protagonist. Yeah. I'm pretty excited to see what our thoughts are of uh, Haunted Mask 2. Because it is, it's it's still pretty decent, it's still a pretty good book, but I'm very interested in what we'll think of it. I feel like it's not going to live up just because of the nature of sequels. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, this is pretty much how the format's going to be. This is going to be a relatively short episode, I think. We're just going to kind of give our quick re-impressions of the books, and... Should we do a short little synopsis of just, like, what happens? Yeah, sure. Haunted Mask. I I, I feel like we're going to do this in... I might as well... Should we start from the beginning? Should we start with Haunted Mask? Because I kind of already said I Haunted feel like Mask. Let's just start with Haunted Mask, because, again, that's, like, the strongest one out the gate of... Yeah, for sure. So, with Haunted Mask, very quick synopsis. Uh, Carly Beth is a very um, sad, picked-on girl. Uh, very much like Sam. She wants to get revenge on everyone. Sorry, they want to get revenge on everyone. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> Carly Beth, she, they as well. No, uh, <laughs> We don't know. I Probably could, she, her. I could see, I could say, I think she would be a she, they. Yeah. Yeah, I think, I think she'd be hip and cool like that. Or just be very self-discovery like that. Yeah. She, she's trying to find something for herself. She's trying to find something about herself. Yeah, good for them. Yep, good for them. Uh, they, uh, you know, they're bullied constantly and she, they just want to get revenge on Halloween. She's tired of being picked on by everybody who just calls her Scaredy Beth. And she finds herself a mean mug looking mask from a mask salesman who's like, I will not sell it to you. Oh, how much? Yeah, okay, I know. I need to I need to pay off my phone bill or some shit. Capitalism is hell. Capitalism is hell. Uh, here you go. Even though in the in the book in the sorry in the TV series she just like literally takes the mask, throws the money, and is right out the door. Yeah, funniest freaking moment. Um, He's but, like, "Don't do it," and she's like, "I'm doing it." Bye, bye, mm, bye. I'm Kelly Beth. Mm, bye. Uh, did I say Sarah Beth at all during that time? No, I, I will come out every now and then. Uh, so she gets revenge. She literally puts on the mask. It at first it doesn't want to come off, but it does come off eventually. Uh, in the first time she puts it on, but then she later on she just puts it back on. Doesn't want to come off. She acts like a complete asshole, complete monster. And uh, by the end of the night, they're freaking out that they can't get the mask off. They're freaking the fudge out. You can say fuck in this. I know, but I want to say fudge. Okay. So there. So fuck you. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the um. I know I can swear on my podcast, Sam. They're my podcast. I know which ones I can swear and not swear on. Thank you very much. But she freaks the fuck out. She finds her me uh, her source of love 
and she's able to remove the mask, and twist ending, her brother puts it on. And wasn't, like, the second time he put it on, too? Uh, no, that was his first time. Okay. But, like, the mask person said whoever puts it on next, like, if they put it on one more time, it's gonna be stuck on their face. Awesome. But they are able to get it, get it off, and in the second book, they, like, start off by being like, yeah, they are able to get it off, it's okay. They just got a little bit of butter and just kind of... Yeah, and just put a little bit, they put a bit, they soaked up his neck. Yeah. He needed to clean himself up anyways. It, he was gross. Yeah. But yeah, honestly, Haunted Mask, five out of five book in my opinion, strongest book that we've read out of the Goosebumps so far. Agreed. Uh, do you have anything else to say about this one? I, I really relate to Carly Beth as a kid that was scared easily, and Chris will still, I jump easily, so he will still do that and, be, and laugh. Abu, 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 abu. All right, Sam, uh, yeah, what, what would you like to talk about next? What would you say is the next best book out of the bunch? I'm between Monster Blood and Stay Out of the Basement, personally. Monster Blood 1? Yes. Really? For me, it's Stay Out of the Basement and Monster Blood 2. Yeah, I think you're right, actually. Monster Blood 2 is more memorable. Yeah. If anything, let's just save Monster Blood for the end, because those, those kind of, like, tail it. One they all another. get, yeah. Let's do Stay Out of the Basement. Stay Out of the Basement. Stay Out of the Basement! Do you want to recap, or would you like me to recap? So, I was going to say, that's the one I actually ha- found my notes on. Yeah. So, their dad is a Dr. Botany. Yeah. And basically, he's like, don't go into the basement, whatever you do. And they're like, why? And he's like, don't, just don't do it. Just stay out of my work. Yeah. And then they find out it's one of those in true typical fat, Goosebumps fashion. Nothing is what they see, what it seems. <laughs> and isn't it an evil, like, plant clone kind of thing? Uh, yeah, it ends up being an evil plant clone at the end. And uh, they kill him, save the dad, save Mr. Martinez, who is now shirtless inside the basement for some reason. Yeah. A lot of gay overtones in that one. Yeah, that one. It's like, why is he shirtless? Because yeah. I get the... Plant like... clone was lonely. <laughs> he, he just needed someone. <laughs> love me. Yes, you love me. Uh, but yeah, yeah. I, was about to, I mean, honestly, I, I really enjoyed Stay Out of the Basement as well. Uh, it's one of those ones that every time I read it, oh, I no, like it a little bit more. I just realized this isn't... Oh, yeah, that's this the This is yeah, E.T., because e. I'm like, did E.T. talk much? E.T. is a dumbass doctor. <laughs> so this is just me talking shit about E.T., which is fair. I yeah. stand by that. But by hey, I mean, technically, he is a doctor. Like, I don't think they actually... I don't know if in the book they say he's, like, a doctor of body, but that just makes sense. He is a bot... Like, he is some kind of botanist. Yeah. But yeah, I was about to say, pretty basics. <laughs> kids have to stay out of the basement. Dad's, like, stay out of the basement. Kids go down there, find weird shit, and eventually find that uh, Dad is has been replaced by Evil Plant Clone. Yeah. So yeah. Very fun book. Twi- Do you remember the twist ending, Sam? It's me, your dad. I'm the flower. Yeah. Help me. <laughs> you remember because of Undertale. Yes. <laughs> because I'm, cause that's the first thing I thought of was Flowey. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, every you know, Honestly, because like, I reread this one after we did the podcast, and I ended up really liking it a lot more the second time around. Because, uh, I don't know, I just did. And I think I would boost it up to a 4 out of 5, in my opinion. Okay. What about you? Do you remember your score? Do you, would you... I would have to reread it. Yeah. If I'm being perfectly honest, because I just don't want to. It has yeah. been years. Yeah. Like, I remember that being in, like, 2021, I believe, when you read that one, or 2022. I can't remember. But it was one of our earliest Goosebump reads. Between uh, uh, Welcome to Dead House and Vampire Breath, which one would you like to go over next? So I remember more about Vampire Breath just because it's newer on the... Yeah, because Welcome to Dead House was our first one we read. Yeah, so I don't remember much, but it's just been years kind of thing. I don't remember much of Welcome to Dead House, if I'm being perfectly honest. That's fair. So, hey, how about I go over Welcome to Dead House real quick? Sure. So they get to the Dead House, and it's dead, and they're like, ah, dead. Okay, no. Uh, <laughs> There's just a corpse in there. That's all that's scary is just a corpse. <laughs> spooky spider. Uh, spooky spider. <laughs> spooky spider. Spooky spider. No, so the uh, the family moves into the aforementioned uh, dead house where creepy things are happening. Uh, I believe the character's name is Margaret. I can't remember her name. Margaret Thatcher, I think. Ew, she should have died. I mean, she did. <laughs> uh, one of the America. best one of the best public restrooms in england yeah gender neutral bathrooms yeah but no they move into the aforementioned dead house weird things are happening the people around town are kind of weird uh they don't come out when the sun is out they eventually find out that everyone in town is a flesh-eating ghoul and they've brought those people into the town to uh drink their blood and bring, uh, bring them into their congregation kind of like that one uh, simpsons home mega man skit Oh, yeah. We just want to eat your skin. <laughs> uh, uh, but the dog and, dies. Yeah, come on, guys. And then the, I remember that. Yeah. <laughs> We're not in your house. We are dead in your house. I think it's like my favorite line from that one. Um, 
It's honestly not that memorable of a first book. I think the only thing that's memorable about it is that it is kind of more frightening than your basic Goosebump book. Uh, there is actual death in there. Like, I think their dog died. That's what I was saying. If it's, I remember correctly. Is I remember the dog dies and we're like, damn. I, I don't think that's right. I don't think the dog actually dies. I'm going to look it up now. Like, you might want to double check, but I don't think Doggy dies. I'm going to let Sam do that while I just... A few minutes later. Okay, Sam was right. Yeah, they killed Petey. Petey, no! Yeah, I remember that because we were so like, wow. There's a body count in this book. Like, yeah. pretty heavy body count. Even at the end when they kill the ghouls, there's a heavy body count. Like, this book probably has the most death in any Goosebumps book. And is one of the few books with actual death in it. Yeah. Uh, but I honestly still don't think it's that great of a book. I feel like Arlstein was still trying to get, like, his, like, kind of grip on things. He just wasn't quite sure of what he was doing. I think it's a pretty solid three out of five if I remember, but I'd have to definitely do a reread. Yeah, it's definitely one that I don't remember much, and I feel like that speaks to it, because I still remember Haunted Mask pretty well. Yeah. I mean, Welcome to Dead House was the first Goosebumps we ever read. Yeah. So, I mean, pretty big difference. Well, Welcome to Dead House and Vampire Breath we read last year. Welcome to Dead House was so much longer ago. True. So. But even Stay Out of the Basement I remember more. Yeah, well, Stay Out of Basement's a lot more memorable. True. <laughs> but that's what I mean, though, of, like, it kind of speaks to it, of the fact that that sticks in my brain, but not Welcome to Dead House. Fair enough. You'll just die, is, is what's on the cover. <laughs> All right, so then we'll do Vampire Breath. Sam, do you remember the plot of Vampire Breath? Or do you they need me to... were like wrestling in the basement, which was weird because it felt like yeah, because they're they're uh, what's it called friends. Yeah, and they're like thirteen, so it's like the like. <laughs> I like that you remember got... the horniness of this book. Well, because I remember we kept joking about it. We're like, this is weirdly horny. Yeah, those those two were wrestling well past the age they should be wrestling. Yeah, and I'm like, you know, he's wrestled me as a boner, and they just don't know what to do at that point. Yeah. But anyways, they knock into a cabinet. They knock over the bottle of Vampire Breath, if I remember correctly, right? You're way, you're way. Oh scared. no, they push off. They they do they, they, they do bump into a cabinet and find that there is a door behind a cabinet. Oh yeah, and then they go down the door, the passageway, and there's a fucking vampire in there. Yeah, there's a, there's a random tomb, and they find Count Orlock or whatever the fuck his name is. Yeah. Uh, Vorlock. He, he wants. He just wants you in his belly. <laughs> it's one of uh, those books. I can't, I can't remember if his name is Count Orlock or something else. I'm drunk, so I can't remember. I don't remember, and I don't really care that much to look it up. I can't even think of Count Vorlock now. <laughs> I want to swallow you whole. <laughs> Fan artist, uh, please draw no, Count Vorlock. No, please don't. Uh, I... Eating Sam. No. <laughs> Wait, no, Sam's already in his belly and he's eating me. And I'm like, yay, I'll be with Sam again. God. <laughs> and, you're, and in the belly it just says, not again. God damn it, Chris. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> Count Vorlock. He's my I don't want to be a part of fetish art, please. Don't worry, they can't see you. You're just in the belly. <laughs> but I'm, I'm, I'm hanging out the mouth being like, whee! <laughs> His jaws unhinged. You're starting to go in, but you're going feet first. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I, I willingly jumped right in. <laughs> uh, so Count Orlock is... Um, so he's like, he's picking on these kids being like, Hey, where's my vampire breath? I need my vampire breath. What the fuck are you doing? I need my vampire breath. And they're like, who are you? What are, what are you doing? And like, they find the vampire breath eventually and he takes them back in time with them. And they're like some weird part, like weird castle all of a sudden. And there's a little girl there who reminds me of the little girl from, uh, what's it called, um, Interview with a Vampire. And what's it called, they eventually find a, a bottle of vampire breath, they bring back Crown Orlock and the kids back to their present time, and it turns out the little boy was an actual vampire all along. And that's like his grandpa, right? Or yeah, something like that? Yeah, his grandpa. They're yeah. like, oh, grandpa, you just needed your nap. Yeah, he just, no, he didn't, no, he needed his vampire breath so he could, because he had been sleeping for so long. Yeah. Yeah. I I, I want to say I gave that one like a two out of five because Count Orlock was like a bitch. Like I thought he'd be a scarier villain, but he's just like a fucking pedantic little bitch. Yeah. Maybe it was like I don't know. It was like a two or two and a half. I, I want to say remember. it was like a two and a half, like because it had some decent moments and some imagery. I remember. Yeah. But yeah, it was not a great one. Like yeah, it was not. I, it was a lot of him being like, "Find my vampire breath." I need my vampire breath now. And then that little girl's like, "I'm gonna fucking kill you." And I do it. And yeah. So yeah, Vampire Breath, not the best one we read, but it's yeah. definitely in that weird, I think that one, it was in the 40s or 50s area, and like, there's a lot of experimental books in that area, 
Like, there's Calling All Creeps, Attack of the Pumpkin Heads, and stuff like that of just really weird ones. So, there we go. All right, now let's recap the Monster Blood Quadrilogy. Because one Halloween, uh, I think it was after we read um, Godzilla Ate My Homework, and that little boy was, like, the biggest Malvin and biggest God, idiot. God, I fucking hated that kid. And... Uh, one of our followers at Woman Enthusiast, I don't know if they would let me use her name on here, but they said, what's it called? If you want a stupid uh, main character, you should read the Monster Blood uh, Quadrilogy. So I was like, or, or I think they said just read Monster Blood 1. And I was like, oh, we're going to read all of them if we're going to do all the Monster Bloods. And honestly, I, I, I remember having a really good time with that one because like those were four really varying degrees of good yeah. To bad, you know? Because, like, the first one, I re- like, I read it, like, we read it, and it was like, all right, that was okay. That was interesting. A lot of dumb moments. But then Monster Blood 2 came around, and that one was really freaking good. And then it just went downhill from there. Yeah. <laughs> so, recapping on Monster Blood 1, do you remember what happened in that one? That one, he goes to stay with a relative, right? His aunt, his great aunts. Yeah. And he finds the thing of monster blood. And do it's you remember like, where he finds it? Isn't it like a shop or something like that? Yeah, he, he buys it at a store with Andy. Evan and Andy. Yeah. And they're like, don't open it. And he's like, I'm going to open it. Well, no. So it turns out, like, the, at first it's just normal monster blood. It bounces really high. It's a toy and shit. Yeah, it's, it's uh, gas, basically. The dog basically. eats it and it gets sick and starts growing. But then, like, it's something... I can't remember if the dog threw it up or something. I can't remember. Yeah. Maybe it shit it out. And he was just like, ah, sweet. My toy's okay. Uh, <laughs> Um, but, or maybe it just ate a little bit and it started growing. And then there's like a witch at the end who said, I cursed the monster blood. I also cursed her aunt who can't hear. And then the witch, uh, Sarah Beth, that's the witch in that one. She gets, ends up getting eaten by the monster blood. And then the curse ends for some reason. And it's the most convoluted bullshit, but it's amazingly yeah. bad. And I think I'd give it like a three and a half out of five for how just amazingly stupid it is. It's very pulpy. Yeah. Like very much pulp. Like it's very much... We it's Arl Stein wanting to do his own version of the blob without it being overly gory. Yeah. Or to uh uh camp, like the original. Yeah. But I mean Monster Blood One, fun book. Evan and Andy are two of my favorite like throughout this series, Evan and Andy are two of my favorite goosebump kids. They're so Evan's an idiot and Andy is just a troublemaker and I love her. Yeah. Like no, they they would be non-binary. Yeah, <laughs> but Andy is the most non-binary of like I you know I didn't like this stuff, but I like to be my own individual. Yeah, there's a there's a manic pixie dream girl before manic pixie dream girls, and then when I don't like labels, don't yeah like oh my god she is genders <laughs> for fucking losers. Oh my god, Andy non-binary Andy. icon. Yes. Uh, Monster Blood 2. Do you remember that one? That is the one with the hamster, right? That is the one with... Uh, uh, is it Nibbles? I, I, is it Nibbles? No, 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 Sam. It's Cuddles the Hamster. Okay. Though Nibbles is a great name. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. thank you. So, yeah. So, Andy's back... Or, Andy. <laughs> Evan's at school now. And Andy joins him, uh, actually, in, this, in the same city now. Because uh, he was visiting his aunt, if we remember correctly, from the mm-hmm. first one. And Andy found a uh, uh, found found a jar of monster blood. And it's like, hey, let's fuck around. And Evan's like, please stop! I don't want to do this. And she's like, get she, she, yeah, she's the the, the horny toad <laughs> yeah. image. Uh, <laughs> like, I love her. She's they're they're amazing. Non non binary icon. <laughs> non bicon. <laughs> Oh gosh, Andy, Andy's the best. And like, uh, Evan is being bullied by a boy named Conan who dunks him. He literally picks him up and dunks him in a fucking basketball hoop. Yeah, which honestly, goddamn, like. Like, goddamn, Conan's scary. I mean, to be fair, at least kind of lives up to the name of like Conan the Barbarian. Yeah. Like, I would be like, oh, there's some kids where I'm like, why is your name Conan? Conan would be our kid. Like, we'd be like, oh, he's yeah. our sweet boy and, like, just beats up kids for no reason, even though we, like, show him nothing but, like, love and everything. See, the thing is, is it's more just the insecurity. Yeah. And he's afraid, and it's he's, also... He's tall. He's taller than us now. That's yeah. why, because he got your dad's genes. He somehow got uh, mutated like your dad did with the radiation. I got x-rayed a lot, apparently. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, um, it's also that he hears us argue, and he's just taking out... But it's actually us fucking... <laughs> So he doesn't know how to process it. 
<laughs> so he's so confused and he just takes it out on poor Evan. <laughs> oh, Conan, I'm sorry, my boy. <laughs> it's a revenge song. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. See, I was also thinking of that key and peel. Of yeah. The, the, <laughs> the what's it called sketch, yeah. I'm having trouble at home and I am... <laughs> And to process it, I'm putting it onto you. I'm putching it onto you. I have I have feelings for the other boys, but I don't know how to process it. Yeah, that's a good one. That's a, yeah. <laughs> Conan is misunderstood. But he's, he's also an asshole. Oh, he's a total fucking asshole. <laughs> but he's our asshole, honey. Uh, <laughs> I'm just saying, maybe he should play less t- less video games. I'm I'm okay with that, but you coddle him and let him. Oh no! You, you, let, you, him play too, him? you let him play too many TF2. Oh no! Wonder he wants the kids heavy so much. <laughs> I don't know how to feel about this or process this. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's continue on. Let's continue on. Uh, 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 gay icon Conan. <laughs> See, all I can think of is then also the TED episode where they parrot that one. Oh yeah! Oh, gosh, I want go watch one. the TED episode. It's good, 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 good show. Good funny show. I want another one. <laughs> Just that at the end of. Uh, so yeah, Evan's like, I'm gonna get revenge on Conan, and I think he was going to it. No, he wasn't going to. Was he gonna make him eat the monster blood, or did they accidentally feed it to the hamster? It's been so long, I can't I don't remember. remember. It's been yeah, it's been. A I remember they break into his house and like try to break into his room to do something, and it's some good tension. Like, oh, it it's really good. And he has a teddy bear, and they're like, he's got a teddy. Yep. What a pussy. Uh, but he could still break them in half. Um, yeah, I was gonna say, I would not, I would not mock the kid whether or not he has a teddy bear. Right, let him have his fuzzies. Uh, I, but I just remember that Cuddles eats it, and the teacher's pissed at, at Evan for feeding the hamster too much, and it's gotten so fat. And then, like, a couple days later, the hamster, Cuddles gets so big, he's, like, what's it called, like, um, he's, I mean, he's, like, 30 feet tall, if I remember correctly. He's fucking huge. Yeah. And, like, Evan's, like, I have to fight this monster now, and he eats the monster blood, but little naked boy Evan, who grew out of all his clothes, can't defeat the hamster, but they both shrink down because the monster blood expires. Also, doesn't he, um... Don't they try to make, like, a giant hamster wheel for Cuddles, and it doesn't work? No, I think, because, like, the dad made, like, some sculpture thing. Uh, yeah. I, I don't remember. I remember, like, that was going to be used, and then it didn't work. I think it was, like, it was, like, a red herring or something. Like, they were going to use something like that, but they ended up not. Yeah. Because it was stupid. <laughs> yeah. I remember it, but I don't re- I know it didn't have any payoff. Yeah. Good book, though, nonetheless. I, I, this one was a strong four out of five. Yeah. If I remember correctly. All right, Monster Blood 3, the introduction of Sam's favorite Monster Blood character. Oh, fuck off. I hate this kid. She loves Kermit, our, our Melvin son. <laughs> you need to let him go outside more. No, he, he... I don't want him to get melanoma like my dad. Sunscreen. It's It stinks. It stings our eyes. <laughs> my put eyes, a, they stink. Put a, put a hat on them. <laughs> he looks funny now. <laughs> I want to beat him up. <laughs> Conan, don't be- beat up your brother. Honestly, like, I always think of Petrie, the Animal Crossing mouse. Yeah. Like, this is what I fucking think of when I think of Kermit. <laughs> yeah, that's Is fair. this little, like, white mouse with large-ass glasses, little fucking nerd. So, Monster Blood 3, uh, Evan is taking care of his young cousin, Kermit, who is a little scientific douchebag, little piece of shit, and one day they're, like, fucking around with Monster Blood. I can't remember how they got that Monster Blood. Uh, like for like, I think they're I think they were gonna fuck with Conan again and give him a chocolate bar with with monster blood, but like it blew up in their face and and Evan got it in his mouth and he starts growing really huge, and then like everyone like Evan puts like Conan in a tree and then he's gonna play baseball for some reason instead of basketball, which is the weirdest choice. Yeah, like why wouldn't you do basketball? Because Arl signs an idiot. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I was gonna say, to be fair, I don't, I don't see him as a sports fan, like a huge sports he likes, fan. He likes sport. I think he likes baseball, and I that's guess. it. Because uh, baseball's mentioned a couple times in some other ones. Oh, I can't baseball's, remember. baseball's in Say Cheese and Die. It's in. I think they do it in Welcome to Dead House. They play baseball, if I'm not mistaken. Like I it, feel like it's a very Ohio thing. I can't explain it, but it feels a very like that makes sense. It's Midwestern. Midwest. Uh, so yeah, Evan, like, becomes popular, but then Conan's like, look at the giant freak, beat him up, policeman and fireman, and they're gonna fucking kill him, because he's a giant boy, and they eventually run away, he shrinks down after, I think he, like, because what's it called, um, there's, like, a shrink potion that Kermit made, 
Then he drank and he eventually shrinks down. But then he shrinks too much, doesn't he? Uh, okay, so the last chapter, he starts shrinking and his dog bores him. Because <laughs> he's like, don't eat me, don't eat me. And the dog's me. like, Arr. Yeah. Freaking, freaking bandit or whatever. Don't eat me. Um, nope. Count or luck. <laughs> just Keller Lock. <laughs> like, <laughs> Alright, and I, I don't... I remember that one being okay, but not the best. There's some good, like, tension in there, but Kermit just r- brings it down. I fucking hate Kermit. It's it's probably, like, a two and a half, like, below... Like, a just average or two book, if you remember. Correctly. Yeah, it was not a high rank. I think it was probably a two, because the next one is so much worse. And the worst part is, I don't remember the plot of Monster Blood 4. Yeah, I don't either. I Okay, I remember they... They somehow find blue monster blood, and it's like a dick sucking lip slug monster. And, and they like put it in like a trash bag too. Yeah, they put it in a trash bag for some reason, and like they get it wet, and it multiplies by getting wet. So it's like a fucking gremlin. Yeah. So it like literally just starts multiplying like crazy, and I don't remember how they defeat it at the end. I really don't like. Did the army come in and, like, shoot him or something? I gotta pull it up, because like, I, I do don't not remember. remember. How, I don't remember the plot of Monster Blood 4 at all. Like, that's how unmemorable of a book it is. Thank God we don't have to read that one again, because it's just, it's just so unmemorable. Later that day, Evan, Kermit, and Andy are called over by Conan. He says that he found some of the candy. No, no, I remember how it ended ended. I just don't know how they defeated the Monster Blood. I will okay. give you the twist ending after that. Okay. Mom appears at the door and demands to know where a pot of hot sauce is gone. Evan. That's right, they fit it hot sauce! Oh my god, yeah! Oh, and it, like, fucking, they explode or some shit, or dehydrate. Yeah. And, like, one gets left behind, and Conan finds it, eats it, and he starts multiplying. It's fucking weird. It's so weird. And now there's, like, a bunch of Conan, and they're gonna get their asses handed to them. It's gonna, it all got his stand. It's too powerful. All I can think of is uh, the, the thing where Roger clones himself in that one American dad. <laughs> Which one was that one? It was the spy ripoff one. Oh, and he just starts fucking himself? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, they start fighting, and then they just all start fucking, and it's just like a Roger orgy. <laughs> <laughs> no, son, no! <laughs> Conan, your repressed sexual urges need to be... Qu- no, do that That is not a buddy. healthy outlet. <laughs> At least do it inside, buddy. <laughs> oh, he's so much bigger than us, he's gonna harm us. <laughs> you couldn't, didn't think he'd beat us up before, he could now. <laughs> uh, call the fire department. <laughs> What are we going to tell the fire department? Chop them up, like in Monster Blood 3. What the fuck? Yeah. Their quintuplets are acting up. They're fucking each other. <laughs> I feel like that's a DCS call waiting to happen. <laughs> Take him away. We don't need four. We'll keep one. <laughs> they gotta like hot food or else eat, uh, what's it called? They, I mean, we'll just, I'll give them like a taco with some hot sauce. Then they'll take care of. Yeah. I'll take care of them. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I don't rem- like. Honestly, I think I gave that one like a one or a point five because it was just boring and so hard to remember. It's really sad that that one is so hard to remember anything about. Yeah, I again just I can't remember. Like I had to look it up <laughs> as we it's saw. It's funny. The first book and the last book are the ones you don't remember the most. Yeah, funny, right? Yeah. So uh, that's our recap, guys. I hope you enjoyed our little recap. I do recommend the episodes themselves. Just go back in the in the archives. It's not that hard. Just look up Goosebumps. It's a quick find, honestly. They're really fun episodes. Most of them were made before we made the podcast actually Drunken Book Club officially. But they're still a lot of fun and still really good times. I know why I didn't... like. We didn't, I realize why I remember 2 and 3. Yeah. Because 2 is really good, as yeah, we said. 2 is really good. So that's why I remember it. Yeah. 3, I was just so much on the Kermit hate train. I was like, this little fucker. <laughs> you were on the on the Kermit hate train. Well, and to be fair, it was also like we were reading all four books in a row. We did. So I was starting to lose steam at that point, I think. I think so. I mean, I think we read the first two and like recorded those ones. And then we were like, okay, time to do 3 and 4 next kind of thing. Yeah. And I was like, god damn it. Like, after that second, after the second one, the third is just such a pitfall... And this little shit. Yeah. It's fair enough. It's fair. Like your little albino freak. He's not, it? No, he was not an albino. He was a ginger. <laughs> I thought he was albino. I don't know why. <laughs> There's no albinos <laughs> in Goosebumps. Actually, can we get a verification on that? Uh, I don't think there are, but there's probably like a random like... There's like one kid. Freaking uh, no pigmenty <laughs> McJohnson. You His know? name is Pinky. Oh, Pinky. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking no pigment McJohnson, Sam. Oh, wait, no. Pinky make no pigment. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, my favorite character from Goosebumps. Uh, 
Who's from 2000s? Uh, the no, classic Pinky book. from Albany. Oh, oh no. <laughs> oh. Alrighty, well, that's the episode. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you really enjoyed what you heard, make sure to like, subscribe, and listen to us on everywhere you can. Uh, we're on Spotify, iTunes, all those places. Rate and review us. But if you really like the podcast and want to even pitch in money or just even subscribe for free, join our Patreon at patreon.com slash drunkenbookclub. You can subscribe for free and eventually get almost all the content. Uh, Some things will still be behind a paywall, but not all of it. You can just subscribe and get it literally a week to a month later, depending on how it is. Uh, you can also find uh, pay a dollar and get everything. It's just a dollar. And you get more stuff and better stuff and hugs and kisses and high fives. IRL. I open mouths kiss them. You high five them. Okay. You fist bump them. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm not allowed to kiss them after the incident. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> be like our one patron, Trey, who is amazingly awesome. And you get a shout out if you pay. Thanks for the dollar. Uh, <laughs> and if you want to be cool, follow Sam at Berserker Rose on most social media stuff. Yeah. You can also follow our buddy Brandon at Aldrich Made and Weiss at Force Left Hander. Pretty cool stuff they make. Um, just look them up. They're pretty cool guys. And that's the podcast for today. First one up is going to be Mr. Teddy. And then we'll be doing a... <laughs> Doing a birthday episode, getting away from Goosebumps, and then we'll be go- doing our first actual Goosebumps book, Say Cheese and Die, which I'm so excited to talk about because upon this reread, I I forgot how much I love this one. Like, this is a solid Goosebump. Like, these kids are such assholes. I love it. Bailey school level of being assholes. Like, early ba- Bailey school. Oh, yeah, early baseball. Yeah. Not, not just the uh, fucking, what is it, Eddie? Yeah. Being a, being a little douche. No, everyone being a douche to each other. Love it. Alrighty, guys. Thank you, and we'll see you later. Bye. They're gonna get you by the goosebumps, goosebumps. They're gonna get you by the goosebumps. Gotcha.